Hello, Rabid Fan. This is the PTSD Academy Podcast, Episode 35, and I'm your host, Dr. Daniel Williams. Today's episode is about the best PTSD audiobooks and documentaries. I have a list for all of these on my website if you just want to click directly to them. Uh, so you don't have to write any of these down. It's all organized at ptsdacademy.com. I'm going to leave that list up there because I bring up so much controversial stuff that I, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to read my research, read documentaries here from the experts like Bruce Lipton, who discovered stem cells in 1967 and teaches energy psychology. Okay. That's the kind of stuff that's mind bending, putting all the science together. It's really one of the probably top 10 reasons why uh, the information age and the internet has to be censored and shut down is because somebody, so much has been discovered that modern medicine is becoming more irrelevant all the time. Okay. The powers that be like the money that they're making. <laughs> so, so many of the documentaries that I recommend are, are um, pushed out of mainstream on purpose, big agencies and representatives and companies and, and lobbyists keep this stuff away from you. So Separately, I have a band videos section that's totally unrelated to this topic, but that's just the kind of guy I am. I'm a doctor who took an oath to not harm you, and you need to have full informed consent of what's in these medicines, what's in the pills, what's in the vaccine, what's in the virus, what's in these audiobooks, what's missing from modern medicine and psychiatry, you know, in, in the terms of PTSD. We're going to cover all of that at this resource, ptsdacademy.com. Without any further ado, I... We'll start with the books and audiobook section. The one that really transformed and changed me in, in, in the path of a psychosomatic connection is Bessel van der Kolk, the book, The Body Keeps the Score. He has in his book a new diagnosis for kids with PTSD, and you should totally check that out because he went so far as to make a curriculum, and they train school and staff and teachers. It's pretty much the education that you that Finland has. You know, there's a... Um, there's a... TV series, I want to say it's in Netflix, called The World's Toughest Prisons. And a guy that was wrongfully accused and spent 20 years behind bars now goes to the world's toughest prisons to see what they're like. And he, and most of them are crazy episodes where you can watch his PTSD get activated if you want to see it on camera. It's about better than any TV reality show I've seen. Because they, they assault him and put him in lockup and strip him down and everything and, and intake him into all kinds of prisons around the world like like uh, Russia, Norway, Brazil. Bad places, folks. This guy did one episode you should check out. It's called Finland, the Perfect Prison. I think it's Finland. I might be wrong, but look at the, the Perfect Prison episode of a series called The World's Toughest Prisons. It's the perfect one. It's the opposite of a tough prison. And what you find out is that every security guard, every janitor, every staff member, every jailer that works there basically stays on one pod with the same uh, prisoners their whole time and they get to know them as friends and they treat them like people and their theory is that they need to treat these prisoners like the neighbors that they're going to be when they get out start doing it now because otherwise how are they going to adjust to being a neighbor in fact the perfect prison is way more than just a theory. Their research shows that they took the recidivism rate, that is people that leave the prison, they, they do their time and get out, and then you know, shortly thereafter, usually within a year, uh, they commit another offense and they're just institutionalized and they just go back to what they know and they get prisoned again, again and again. It went from about 80% down to 30% in one generation, 20 to 30%. So something like a 75% reduction in one generation. So the problems that you think that, you know, that you are told are problems have been fixed elsewhere. If we just do real research with good intention and not let uh, dark forces like overtake our institutions, you know, and, and allow us to not reform a prison system like one in Finland that works, you know? So there you go. It's more than a theory. Uh, it's been shown to work dropping the recidivism rates. And it takes about two years of psychology education as part of their internship training program uh, at, for new employees. So if you work in the prison, you get two years of psychology education. Okay? Bessel van der Kolk basically did that for an American version here for all of us, for families, organizations, schools, 
it, it, it's been laid out there, folks. It's called The Body Keeps the Score. You can check out his references and website for further details on the school curriculum for children from hard places like inner cities where more than half have seen violence, assaults, or murders that are in the classroom. They don't behave cognitively, folks. <laughs> the next one is the Brene Brown collection. She has a lot of books. I call her the queen of emotional authenticity. She's my standard for if I'm being real and being honest, and, uh, and we hope to make progress there. I haven't read all of her books, but I'm a fan of the parenting one and the gifts of imperfection, letting go of what you, what is it? Letting go of who you think you are and embracing who you, who you actually are, something like that. I just botched it. That tells you how much time I spent on emotional authenticity. I feel like I read, I listened to her audio book, The Gifts of Imperfection, one time on a bike ride, and I was crying, and I made the change. I just made the change. I was like, I, you made the point. I need to be real. I need to, uh, to make sure I'm spending some time around people I can say anything to. And that's a struggle with the lockdown, isn't it? So you need to at least learn what the answer is so we can learn how to create it in our new communities. The next book slash audio book is The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. This is the discoverer of stem cells. And if you don't read any other book, you need to understand what he's saying in The Biology of Belief because he discovered stem cells, and a stem cell comes from your bone marrow, and what he discovered in 1967 was that depending on the petri dish you put it in, it would turn into different type of material in the petri dish, like brain material, bone, skin, connective tissue, heart. Everything could be grown in a petri dish. The cue that the, that the stem cell took was not from its DNA that was already in there. It already had inside of itself the DNA required to create any type of cell. What told it what genes to turn on was its environment. And as he began to discover that in the 60s and spent some decades really figuring out what that means is that he discovered the quantum physics is way more a controller of biological movement of events and protein folding than anything that's inside the system. So EMFs can come from within your body. Your body communicates that way to itself, and that's not taught in medical school. You need to know that, and medical schools need to wake up and start teaching quantum physics. Totally, totally, instead of minimizing the placebo. So if I skip down a little bit, oh, I didn't put it on here. I've got one called, oh, it's under continuing education, activating your placebo. I believe that's uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's the neurologist, neuroscientist guy that healed his own crushed, fractured spine with the powers of his mind. I mean, this is the way I'm introduced to this, and I'm like, what? And this is about four years in the making for me to process all the stuff that they did not teach me in medical school and try to lay it out for you. So you got to check out Bruce Lipton. He's the man. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza is the next one. I just mentioned him. He, he teaches some continuing education classes on his website. I've got the link there on my site, ptsdacademy.com. All this stuff is organized. Again, you don't have to write this down and take notes. The next uh, audio book, it's an audio program in his own voice, actually, is by Napoleon Hill, The Science of Personal Achievement. And let me tell you about this one. So this guy started in around like 1908, researching under the direction and introductions of Andrew Carnegie to 500 of the world's most successful people at the turn of the last century. These are the people that were responsible for the Industrial Revolution. He became friends with many of them, went to their homes. He knew Henry Ford and was an advisor to four presidents. He was brought on the mastermind team to help run it after the Great Depression so that they could get all of the machines of information like the church and the newspapers and radio on the same page to get the economy moving again, okay? Now it seems like they learn from that and it's all turned evil, right? <laughs> all these systems of our government now turned against us in the same way mastermind went. I have a message for you. Love wins and we can rebuild. We can rebuild people. We just need mentorship and selflessness and the right opportunities. And guess what? We're bringing a circle community uh, online. Uh, connected with the teachable classes where we can do it. You can't say there's no opportunity to do a rebuild and to rebuild your life because I'm trying to create one, put it out there for you. All right, the next category is documentaries. Absolutely my favorite. You must watch. I believe it's in Amazon Prime. 
you can catch all of these independently, it is called The Healing Field. You need to check out The Heal Healing Field. It is a well-established fact uh, that there is a biofield, a fourth-dimensional electro quantum physics nature matrix in which we are all in. So that movie, The Matrix, is actually real. We're in a matrix, only it's an actual life. We're not a digital plug-in to it. It's real. <clears throat> and that's how uh, so much control of biology, mood, and energy shifts happen in connection with people and intuition and telepathy. And if, that, if telepathy sounds weird to you, it was accepted as common knowledge by the CIA, CIA in 1995. And my next book is going to be about the weapons formed against us. While we've all kept this kind of knowledge out of mainstream education, uh, the big government has been building weapons based on that technology against us. So that's my next theory. If you're interested, you definitely want to get in my early book, book club for that one. I'm going to put all of my books into in sort of like a compendium, an encyclopedia, so that when I write The Weapons Form Against Us, you'll have all the references that I've written also in the book. Extra books will be in the back. There's going to be about six books in one. But it'll be organized around what you can do for yourself, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and the weapons formed against us so I can teach you about energy medicine. All that to say that EMFs are real, I have to incorporate a lot of references, documentaries to back up some of the stuff I'm saying because my theory on trauma is that we're basically doing it all wrong. Why would I spend the time to make a podcast and try to tell you about this stuff? It's because by talking about the wound, you're agitating it. By creating that energy vibration and bringing it up to the surface without trying to discharge it or release it and keep it in there is only making it worse and the demons just bounce around in your head even louder. Many people won't return to the therapist because they get worse because they're not taught body-based techniques or anything. It's cognitive ABC worksheets or the highway. So you might know that there are new forms of uh, media and entertainment, social media platforms popping up because most of them are so censored and people have been cutting out of their own channels, even popular people, right? On all sides of this crazy world uh, war that we're in. Well, gab.com, G-A-B, gab.com is one of these free speech platforms and let me tell you, there must be something good about it because all of the levels of you know, religion, education, and government have uh, stood up against Gab. So Visa won't even let you join as a member there. Uh, no credit card companies support them because they do things like tell you what's in the vaccine, you know, <clears throat> so by doctors that are censored. They have to have somewhere to go. I put some banned videos on my website. My point is that when you go to look at other social media, I, I found a PTSD expert. There are only two inside of Gab right now, and it's 2021, November 5th, today. And the one of them, I followed her because she's the only PTSD female. I'm like, this is a good person who's trying to help in here. I want to be a partner, maybe invite her onto the podcast, and I will. I will invite her onto the show, and we'll see if she responds. But I'm going to call her out. Because the first thing she said in this first large post after I started following her, the first sentence was, we are worthless half shadows of our former selves. And then she went on to say some uplifting things and copy paste in an ABC worksheet. worksheet. <laughs> I said worksheet. <laughs> That's about right. That is a good Freudian slip. ABC worksheets with such a terrible energy, self-degrading, shameful comment in the beginning. Like, whatever, lady. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to blow her up, insult her on her own channel, invite her to my, I want to invite her to my show all nicely. And while I am recording her, call her out on it. So does that sound like the kind of style I should do here? I mean, this is a therapist. She's part of the problem if she's pushing ABC worksheets and talking shame. I mean, that means she has no insight into the relevance of quantum physics, energy medicine, uh, purpose, energy, faith work, all that. The whole categories of who you are as a multidimensional person, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and sexual, those five categories are she's trying to fix with a cognitive one. And she's using shame to do it. So she's using the emotional category in a toxic, negative way. And she's trying to say that just this little cognitive slot is all you need. Right? That's what she did. And uh, so that's what we're up against, folks. Help me. Help me, please. Because 
for me to speak out anymore, I'll be censored. You need to check me out on gab.com. I'll always put my podcast in there. There are ways that you can subscribe to podcasts that don't involve podcast players or anything. Just go to ptsdacademy.com. Uh, under the podcast, I have a how to subscribe to podcast podcast link. Now, there's multiple options there, and YouTube is, for now, always there to help you. I call it murder tube, by the way. I know I'm on a tangent, but you can see why. The third category, back to our topic here, is continuing education. Uh, so I've got books, audio books, documentaries. Oh, no, I left off. There's two more documentaries to tell you about, and then continuing education. So documentary number two is called The Heal Documentary. Basically, this is the research behind how gratitude turns on your placebo. I have seriously boiled that down. It's a totally organic, uh, vegetable, garden-grown diet only. So you have to unplug from this world system. You have to do ancient stuff like the Daniel diet in, in the Bible, you know, where you don't eat the king's worship food. And I, we've made our food into an idol for sure. It's on all the TV shows. Uh, we think it's better if it's processed, and I think that's an insult. You just don't know how to cook. So we've outsourced our cooking, our education, our schooling, our religious education, our government to outside people who mean us harm. So you need to come back and realize that the system's been shifting us towards uh, food and water that's killing us and pills sold to us by breached companies, if you ask me with this vaccine, they're breached. And at the same time, uh, they often own the things that cause the disease, like Bayer Corporation. Yeah, you know, I grew up having Bayer around and aspirin and all that. So they own aspirin. And they also own the corn patent. And if you watch m movies like Food Incorporated, they know that the the genetically modified corn causes disease and they make medicines to sell you at the same time to, to pacify the symptoms of that disease, not to reverse it. The solution is to not eat the processed food of the public. That is the solution. So I'd like to invite, if, you, if you're a prepper or if you're a person that, here, here's one of my heroes. I've seen some videos out there. People that grow enough of a vegetable garden that they can enjoy a smoothie off of year round once a day you know, for one person or a household. If, if you know how to do that kind of thing or you have your own show and you like PTSD work, man, we need you to work together because we need to help prevent a lot of trauma and loss and death and starvation by getting people to grow their own stuff. Uh, we, you know, society wants you to believe you depend on these systems and you don't. For, for thousands of years, people got by and did all this stuff on their own. They worked in community together with at least a few families at a time uh, for a harvest, but but we got to wake up and we got to get back off the grid. All right, the third documentary I've got for you is called The Emotion Code. My take home from this is, this one is all about the science behind how you can rewire your own brain. Whatever has happened to you will still have happened to you. You don't change the past, but every time there's a memory or an image or a smell or an energy, any of those four things, that activate the whole trauma cycle again, get your adrenaline going, shut down your frontal lobe so that you're reacting to your situation. You know, that's happened to a lot of us lately, including me. You know, we, if you get stressed out, you can't think straight and you take those breaks and make sure to exercise and walk it off as much as you can. And pray, and music therapy. I do a lot of things and, and I sometimes feel like uh, they don't all work. But I have to remember to be grateful that I have opportunity to do as many self-care things, stress, relaxation, energy, grounding things as I can. So remember your gratitude. I know you have a struggle or you wouldn't be listening, right? But remember your gratitude because even if you can only be grateful for 1% of the things in your life, I'm telling you that makes a physiological shift and an energy shift in your body. If you'll add gratitude to some form of physical energy release, like going into the gym and saying, hey, I'm releasing my stress for the week, or getting that massage to release that stress. Don't just get it done. Say to yourself, I'm releasing it right now. Take a deep breath as, as, as if it's a ceremonial act. Take a deep breath, a movement, a stretch, yoga, 
stretches, however you see fit, do something physical with that and energy, and, you know, and move the energy. And over time, you know, the emotion code will show you their research. And, and it, they even demonstrate the actual release technique in the video. So these are not your scammers that, you know, all the psychologists that like to come up with a new way to do therapy, which is great. But then they patent it and you got to pay a whole lot of money and copyright it and stuff just to get access to something that's supposed to be helpful. Most people don't have access to it. Most people in public. So we're turning that upside down. In my books and in my courses, I actually give away the worksheets. Uh, they're included PDF downloadable versions of about six books of mine that I've written. Three are full length books uh, and a couple other planners, workbooks and quick guide. All PDFs, you can print as much of that stuff as you want. And if you're a therapist or you're a counselor and, you know, you want to take on counseling people more, you could just use my worksheets. Just go to those pages at the end of, it's called the Warrior Class, the Caregiver's Guide to PTSD. Caregiver could be a psychiatrist, psychologist, licensed clinical social worker, you know, LPC, LMSW, chaplain. You could do it yourself, <laughs> whatever. Uh, just get the help you need, get the resources. I believe in putting it in your hands and I'm not worried about your copyright on that. Okay. Pay your 1995. Who knows? They probably charge $200, $300 to copyright some of these psychotherapies that are supposed to help people. And most people don't pay for it, you know, and there are free versions. Uh, but I don't think you're going to find a free version of PTSD resources that is as holistic as we are here. And I think by episode 34, you're starting to figure that out. Okay, so that's it for my documentaries. There are a lot of others, but I'm trying to keep the, sh the, the list short. If anything on my site is lacking, just let me know. I would love to hear from you. And at this point, I make podcasts based on listener feedback. So if you send me an email, I'm probably going to make a podcast directly discussing it. And you're going to get more out of it than you would from an email. Because I hate texting an email. It takes so long to try to get the same point across when you can't hear the emotion and the energy behind the person, what they're trying to say, to put the knowledge into perspective. It might be important, but it might be so rare you choose on your own when you've heard the facts to just not worry about it. <coughs> okay. So to help back me up and my science up, uh, I've got some continuing education links as well. So these aren't exactly audiobooks or documentaries. I tricked you. I want to throw in a few that are for professionals, people that want full-length courses on energy medicine because you think that's interesting. And I'll tell you, the most common profile I see is someone that's had PTSD for some years. Could be three years, could be 30. Okay? And they've tried the cognitive therapy. They know about the ABC worksheets. They're often smarter or more educated than the graduating uh, counselors leading these groups. You know what I'm talking about. And when you go to a therapist, it, it seems like they read it out of a book. Okay, I'm trying to give you the book. <laughs> and this is the book. Continuing education. So my mainstream one I like to get a lot of my CME from, including this weekend, is the Neuroscience Education Institute. This is mainstream this is Dr. Stephen Stahl, who writes the prescriber's guide for all of the pharmaceutical drugs. He is the man. He's in his 70s. He's vibrant, youthful, and funny. It's a great conference in person. I've been a couple of times. I'm doing it remote this year because of COVID. I'm scared of the people that have, have COVID and have had vaccines, and they're all mixing this stuff together. <laughs> they're gaining functions out there I don't want, like cancer. Anyway... The next one is the Science of Energy Healing. This is a continuing medical education course. If you're a psychiatrist, other kind of counselors have some of those classes that are available for credits. I don't think this one is, but they like to throw in bonuses in their bundles and stuff. It's just a great resource. I've mentioned it a few times on the podcast, the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. So if you're a Western-trained counselor, I, I really don't mean to beat up on you. You carry the backbone of these hospitals. You carry the backbone of the therapy. And remember, it helps most people. 67%? Like, easy. That, that's, that's millions of people. Do not underestimate the value of cognitive therapy, you know, in Western training stuff. You have to value all of them and put them in their proper place. That's my point. And so if you want to round out your education, check these out. Consider getting a certification in something. And... You can offer it to your patients in full disclosure. So if they want to do PTSD therapy with you, 
You can say, hey, I've got the cognitive model. Here's Dr. Dan's worksheets from his book. Here, you can print them out too, <laughs> you know, whatever. Share it. Or you can go the old-fashioned route and give them other options like, how about Reiki? How about a meditation training instead? How about one of the fastest one, in, and it's the next one on my list, is the emotional freedom tapping technique. It sounds ridiculous, but it's not just tapping. It is energy movement. You stir it up on purpose. You use acupressure body points that are ancient in the hieroglyphics that overlap with acupuncture, acupressure, reflexology. You know, you get it, right? Okay. It's just real quick, and in a few minutes, you can release an energy that's been trapped a lifetime. That's their claim to fame, and it's taught in the advanced classes by people like Bruce Lipton. These people are my intellectual and academic heroes because they followed the real science all the way to where it led them, is that invisible uh, subatomic quantum physics energy matrices have a lot more to do with biology and physiology than we ever thought, and not DNA. So this goes against uh, Charles Darwin, in my opinion. It, you know, Even though these science energy experts I just finished telling you are my heroes, they keep teaching uh, evolution, evolution of humans. And I don't believe in the theory of evolution. I don't. I just don't. I never have. And I have a degree in biology with honors. And I was not convinced of the case they made to me in undergrad. And the stuff that I've learned in these documentaries and this continuing education courses I'm sharing with you in this podcast will tell you why I want my money back from my bachelor degree in biology from the University of Texas at Tyler. Because they left this stuff out. It's kind of important. Just like another episode I did on um, the benefits of medical marijuana and hemp oil in PTSD. That stuff was discovered uh, to be beneficial decades earlier, too, and was never taught in any of my undergraduate or medical school classes. So now we know why, right? So many things are kept from our consciousness on purpose. And so I'm trying to round out everything. When you know all these pieces, you're going to have way more tools. If you have a bad day, you're going to say, okay, Dr. Dan said to identify is this a physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional problem. And if I'm having a problem in one area, lean on any of the other three. And by going through these references, these audiobooks, the documentaries, and continuing education, if you'll do these classes, you won't get stuck out on a bad day uh, without a solution in one of those categories. You'll have such a sophisticated list. And I think healthcare has tried to dumb down what is possible and try to teach you very minimal standards for survival and not teach you that you're actually capable of quite a lot more. In fact, you don't need them, possibly. <laughs> possibly. All right. My lawyers would require that I say, I am not trying to diagnose or cure or treat you. And I would definitely tell you to go to your own doctor and therapist, you know, in addition to anything you do with us. I would tell you that, but at the same time, I would say, bring them these books and resources and talk about them and pick their brain to see if they know anything about this. I mean, I say on my homepage that if your therapist wants to start off your PTSD therapy, with some form of exposure, don't walk, run. And I've got links and hyperlinks to those words. You can learn why I think we're doing it all wrong. And, uh, and, and I think higher of you. I think you can learn this stuff. If you have a good teacher, it can be simplified. So you just know there's depth. You won't run out of hope, will you? You won't get suicidal as often, will you? Because you have a lot of hope. Because there's depth in these categories just there for you to do. You just have to decide if you want to get better or not. I know I do each day. I have to decide, do I want to sit around and complain and be hurt today and be the victim? Or do I want to get up and try to make the world a better place and focus on something bigger than me? And that's what keeps me going. All right, the next continuing education reference I have for you is One Light Healing Touch School. This one is a little bit too far off of the, main, off of the path for me I haven't signed up yet. It looks like prior to COVID, it would have been cool to do a one or two week seminar where literally in about 10 days, they, they demonstrate and teach, you practice 55 different energy modalities. 55. Not all these people have the same religious and spiritual beliefs. And so it's, uh, be careful if you're a Christian, you know, but don't rule out Holy Spirit Reiki as the actual hands-on healing that you need in the end times when the Spirit is poured out upon all flesh. So 
if you believe with all the hate being poured out these days, that love is also supposed to be also supposed to be poured out and God's spirit is supposed to be poured out and healings and miracles are supposed to also be poured out. Um, then I'm trying to lead you to the water folks. Check out the one light healing touch school and get involved with their class where they literally do it. They literally practice it. One day I'd like to do my own version of it, uh, but they've got 55 different modalities in one class. Nobody has that. Nobody has that. So there's a link for you there. Even though I don't, support everything that goes on there uh, you know it would take me too long to explain why the point is you might not like everything a school is doing but in your purpose and in your life and in your plan do you think this education would help get to you what goal you see you should do what vision you're supposed to bring to the world so if you'll go to college and respect that you should definitely go to one of these kind of schools um, the colleges should teach this stuff and the last one I have for you is called Activating Your Placebo. That's a continuing education course. I don't think that one has credits, uh, but it is for anyone and everyone, whether it's a professional or an individual, uh, they have online classes kind of like mine. I think they use Kujabi instead of Teachable. Uh, but Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, he he's the neuroscientist that supposedly cured his crushed spine with his mind. And he teaches energy medicine and energy movement. He's a very practical guy. I think he has tackled a lot of what I would have wanted to do with this science, but he's already done it. So that's why I put the references here to the side because it's not about Dr. Daniel Williams making PTSD Academy something special. It's about helping you and coming alongside the shoulders of the other giants and referring you. So I'm going to keep these links up on my website and uh, along with the band videos uh, so you can prepare yourselves. And if I can help and we can build community, just let me know. My website is now tied in with teachable courses that is linked to a circle social platform. So we now have our own social media platform off of Facebook, off of Instagram, off of Chinagram. And, and we can discuss things privately without the toxic uh, culture following us in. I'm going to monitor that if you believe and agree that we need a safer place to talk about healing and rebuilding our lives together, and that it doesn't need to have profanity, I'm convinced, and it's my membership community, that we don't even need to tell trauma stories so they won't be allowed. Don't come and, and tell what happened to you in here. If that's what, a place you need, you need a therapist for that. Tell your therapist what happened to you <laughs> and come share a life with us and let's build something together. Let's have fun. Let's do a conference. Let's meet in person. Let's meet up somewhere and go ziplining. You know, come on people. It's not as bad as they need you to fear. Okay. It's not as bad out there as they need you to fear. There are answers to these things, including cancers. There are answers in some circumstances and some situations, and we need to equip you to improve your chances to be healthy, vibrant, helping the people in your lives, whatever's a priority for you. Bringing that purpose back will settle your trauma symptoms down a lot. Learning an energy release technique will begin to rewire your brain so that one day it's not the same anymore. Did you hear me? I want to say that again. One day it will not be the same anymore if you will practice different things. You can get mad like I did and pissy that now I got to do extra work because I was traumatized or I can just do it and enjoy my life. <laughs> there you go. I'll leave you with that. God bless. Take care.